welcome to today's lectures so today we will talk about the liquefaction of gases and the critical phenomenon so what is liquefaction of gases and critical phenomenon liquefaction of gases means it is a phenomenon by of converting of uh, gas into liquid so by this phenomenon gas is converted into liquid that is called liquefaction of gases and the gas is liquefied by controlling two factors so by these two factors we can convert the gas into liquid so what are these two factors the two factors are lowering the temperature and the second is increasing the pressure temperature so if you lower the temperature what will happen the kinetic energy of gas molecules decreases so that what happen their movement becomes slow downs and they are having less they are having more potential energy and if we increase the pressure then these gas molecules uh, which are losing kinetic energy so they will come closer due to force of attraction because force of attraction is overcoming so they will come closer to each other and they convert into liquid state so uh, a change of state has taken place that gas into liquid carbon dioxide ammonia sulfur dioxide water so these type of uh, molecules which are in gases forms are easily liquefied when temperature is lowered by with increasing pressures when you increase the pressure these are easily lowered lowered means uh, temperature lowered they are converted into liquid state so these gases are called as temporary gases why they are easily liquefied because they have greater uh, intermolecular force of attraction or you can say they have high value for a that we have already studied in the wonderwall gas equation what is a so a of sulfur dioxide more followed by ammonia followed by water and carbon dioxide so due to this these gases are this temp these are called temporary gases and they can be easily converted into liquid states this is uh, this value of a is in decreasing order but there are some gases like hydrogen like nitrogen oxygen so under this condition whatever we are giving to carbon dioxide ammonia they cannot be liquefied if you give the same condition they will be remain as the permanent gases why we are calling as a permanent gases and why we are calling as a temporary gases now question is that why this permanent gases cannot be liquefied why ammonia can be easily liquefied and if you are taking hydrogen helium they cannot be liquefied one one possible reason we can say is because they have less uh, intermolecular force of attraction that is there but there are some other reasons that we we are going to see today Uh, thus, the above two condition is helpful in converting a gas into liquid. Two condition means lowering the temperature and increasing the pressure. So these are the two conditions. But the effect of temperature is rather more important. So temp role of temperature in this two temperature pressure is much more than the that of pressure. The e essential conditions of liquefaction gases were actually it was discovered by one scientist called Andrew in 1816. He he found this uh, factors by using the liquefaction of carbon dioxide so he gave one pressure volume and temperature relationships he reported that above a certain temperature he reported that above a certain temperature it was impossible to liquefy a gas whatever the pressure was applied so after a certain temperature above a certain temperature it is not possible to liquefy a gas it will be always in gaseous state that's why there are some gases which is in permanent state the maximum temperature below which a gas can be liquefied by the application of only pressure that is called critical temperature so there is one more new term is coming that is called critical temperature this is a temperature so below which below which a gas can be easily liquefied means at this temperature or above this temperature the gas cannot be liquefied you give whatever pressure so this temperature becomes a very important role in playing important in liquefying the gases uh, at this temperature whatever the pressure reco uh, is required to liquefy a gas is Called critical pressure, and whatever the volume is occupied by uh, the mo one mole of the substance at critical uh, temperature is called as the critical volume. So there are uh, three terms is introduced. One is called critical temperature, critical pressure, and critical volume. And use studies on isotherms of carbon dioxide. I hope that you know the meaning of isotherms that we have studied in Boyle's law. 
सपोज यू टेक कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज एन आइडियल गैस सो आइडियल गैस यू नो द कर्व्स व्हाट कुड बी कर्व्स ड्रॉन सो दिस कर्व्स विल बी योर रेक्टेंगुलर हाइपरबोला एट कांस्टेंट टेंपरेचर बट हियर इफ यू सी दिस डायग्राम वी कैन सी दैट डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ कर्व्स इज ड्रॉन हियर सो वन दिस कर्व्स ओके दिस इज लाइक ए कर्व्स बट इफ यू गो बाय डिक्रीजिंग टेंपरेचर द कर्व्स विल बी स्लाइटली चेंजिंग यू कैन सी दिस कर्व्स इज गोइंग इट्स ओके बट दिस कर्व्स इज समटाइम्स इट्स ओके बट इट बिकम्स ए हॉर्जेंटल लाइन देन अगेन इज ए वर्टिकल लाइन Again, this is horizontal and vertical. Why this curves become horizontal, vertical? What happened to these gases at this uh, different type of temperature for carbon dioxide? So here I have divided uh, these whole curves into three categories. So one category is isotherms below uh, 30 point per one degree. You can see uh, one temperature is this curve, isotherm curve is uh, 31.1 degree, and then other curves is above 31.1 degree, and some two curves is below 31.1 degree centigrade. To understand this nature of different nature of these curves, so let us take first. Isotherms below 31.1 degree centigrade. So you can see there are two isotherms A, B, C, D at 13.1 degree centigrade and E, F, G, H at 21.5 degree centigrade. So you can see here uh, E, F, here uh, A, B, C, D and E, F, G, H. These two curves are there. So keeping in mind, let us see what happens to these curves. Isotherms. A B C D at 13.1 degree centigrade. So here, a uh, curve A B follows Boyle's law. So they follow Boyle's law. Curve A B means you can see here this is curve. This follows the Boyle's law. Then what happened to B C and then what happened to C D? Let us see. At point B, a uh, liquefaction starts. So after this one A B, so after point B, here liquefaction starts. So here liquefaction means these states were gas states. So you can say this is the gas states. This will be your liquid plus vapor phase. You can say both is present, and this will be your complete liquid. This is complete liquid. This will be complete liquid, and all these were gas. All these were gas states. So these are the different type of phases. Now let us see once again. So at point B, liquefaction starts along BC. A slight increase in pressure. When you increase in pressure, what happens is this leads to sharp decrease in volume up to C. So we can see a uh, volume is decreasing. So when you increase pressure, the volume is decreasing. So from B to C, what means this means the gas is converting into liquid state. But it's not liquid. Sometimes vapor, sometimes liquid. So there is equilibrium between between gas and vapor sorry vapor and liquid state so at point c it is completely changed to liquid so uh, here here it will have two phases means between b and c that is uh, it is not gas this will be your liquid phase so it will be a two phases one will be your liquid phase and second will be your vapor phase at this b and c uh, then that is the pressure is constant so both gas and liquid phase are in equilibrium to each other so here liquid and vapor actually this is a vapor because this is the part of the uh, this uh, carbon is a part of the gas so uh, this is a liquid both are both are in equilibrium to each other so the gas is having uh, vapor pressure you can say vapor pressure at equilibrium then after that uh, After that, what happened? After the C, that the vertical curve C D means vertical curve means I am describing about this one. So when you increase pressure, then volume is not changing. You can see the it is straight line. The volume is not changing. Here volume is changing, but here volume is not changing. So what will happen here? So along C D, the volume of the gas is uh, changed by a very small amount, even if there is a large decrease in increase in pressure. So when you give large increase in pressure, the volume is not changing and because liquid carbon dioxide almost incompressible so this is the region liquid carbon dioxide is almost incompressible there was another line that is called efgs so efgs let me show you once again so this line is you can see efgs so let us talk about this efgs line so isotherms efgs at 21.5 degree centigrade so it is just just analogous to curve abcd so horizontal part of fg is smaller than av that is at higher temperature the difference between the volume of the gas and the volume of liquid obtained by liquefaction of gas decreases and at high temperature second point we can say that higher pressure is needed for liquefaction of gases so this is the 
point. Now isotherms above 31.1 degree centigrade that is uh, 48.1 degree centigrade. So one isotherms was there. Let me show you once again. So this was the 48.1 degree centigrade. So let us let us discuss about this one. Then we will discuss about point X. So the horizontal part disappears and the gas shows purely ideal behavior. So there is no possibility of liquefaction of CO2 that how much uh, there is no possibility of CO2 that uh, whatever you uh, pressure be applied the uh, CO2 cannot be converted into liquid it will remain as the gas. So after 31.1 degree centigrade the CO2 will be remain as the gas it cannot be converted into liquid whatever pressure is supply is pressure is applied so this was the experimental phenomenon now let us talk about isotherms at 31.1 degree centigrade so as the temperature is raised the horizontal portion of the isotherms becomes smaller and smaller until at 31.1 degree centigrade at which it reduces to a point p that is called critical point or point of inflection so let us see diagram once again so this is the diagram curve diagram so when this uh, we are increasing decreasing uh, increasing the temperature so this curve is going small 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 ultimately it is going very small point now this point we are talking this point is called as the critical point this critical point or point of inflection so this is small point here. So let us talk about this small point so at and above at means at 31.1 degree centigrade or above this temperature means 32 32 means 31.2 so above this temperature the gas cannot be liquefied by applying pressure only so this uh, minimum temperature or you can say maximum temperature uh, is called as critical temperature so after that we whatever you apply uh, pressure the gas cannot be converted into carbon cannot convert into liquid so this is the very important thing uh, important property for any type of gases now igkl that is called critical isotherm this is very clear so here the gas and the liquid has the same density and these uh, phases are very indistinguishable. You cannot distinguish the tangent at critical point P is horizontal so that uh, dp by dp, dp by dv that is this differentiation of pressure by volume at critical point will be zero. So at this critical point corresponding pressure uh, at critical temperature will be called as pc and corresponding volume at critical temperature is called as critical volume of carbon dioxide. So it may be concluded uh, from this explanation that uh, in the area to the left of the dotted line uh, below the critical isotherm. Let me show you diagram once again. So you can see the diagram is this is the dotted line. So this is dotted line. So this is your left line. This is your right line. So in the left and right line so to the left of the dotted line below the critical isotherms only liquid co2 exists and to the right of the dotted line the gaseous co2 exists the horizontal portions within the dotted line shows the equilibrium between gas and liquid phase so let us see once again i am showing you so this side is gas this side is liquid vapor which is in equilibrium and this will be totally liquid so keep all these things in mind so these are very important for the examination point of view